Dear viewers, uh, I welcome you to this presentation. This presentation is related to the application of neural networks and control systems. Uh, we will try to understand the very basics of how neural networks can be applied in controlling dynamic systems. So let's start. Neural networks in control systems. As you can see over here, I'm Yasir Amir, and you can see my contact number, my WhatsApp number, and my email address in case you want to contact me and discuss these topics, these concepts, and anything, any help that you need from me. So let's start. So first of all, first thing is that what is a multiple layer perceptron? There's a word, there's a term, perceptron. What is a perceptron? First of all, let's try to see that. Perceptron is a single layer neural network is called a perceptron. It has weights and biases, and uh, the network can be trained by using some training algorithm. And uh, the weights, the values of weight and biases are calculated on the basis of that uh, algorithm. And the other thing is that that algorithm can be trained to approximate some function. We give it, we give it some certain input, and we want certain outputs, and in that way we train it, and we want it to perform in some certain way. So that's the whole, basically, whole story, basic story, because there are other types of networks as well. So multiple layer perceptron, a multiple layer perceptron consists of more than one layer. Perceptron consists of just one layer, a multiple layer perceptron consists of more than one layer. Sometimes some books regard the input layer as well, input as well as a layer, input as a layer as well. And uh, some books regard that the activation function, the neurons are actually the layers. So over here in this slide, you can see that we have the log sigma activation functions, and we have the log sigma neurons, that's the middle layer, and then we have the output layer, which is a linear layer, and on the left side, we have the input layer. Input signal is multiplied with weights, and biases are added and then fed into the log sigma layer, and then output is multiplied with the other weights, set of weights, and added with other set of biases, and then that is fed to the linear layer, and this way we can find out and get the output of the neural network. So this is this architecture, this structure of neural network is called multiple layer perceptron. It's very useful, and uh, it can be used to approximate functions, to approximate transfer functions. That's the system model. Now, what is important or exciting about this uh, multiple layer perceptron? Multiple layer perceptron, as you have seen the in this slide, previous slide, it can be used to solve any function approximation problem, provided there are sufficient number of neurons in the hidden layer and the output layer. Such a network was proposed as before as as early as in 1960s, but there was not enough required computing power. The computing power at that time was not much. The way it is today. The type of technology we have today that was not even a dream at that time. Maybe some few people were just dreaming about that, but computing technology was far more inferior to what it's today. At that time, this idea was proposed, but it could not be realized because of the lack of the required computing power. However, in the 80s, when we had a reasonable amount of computing power, David Rivelhart invented. A, an algorithm known as back propagation algorithm to train the multiple layer perceptrons and provided that we have a, a set of data points and the corresponding outputs and in that way we can train it. Now the, the thing is that in 60s we had the problem of computing power as well as we did not have the training algorithm at that time. And uh, in 80s David Dremelhart proposed this a back propagation algorithm and things started working. We had a reasonable amount of computing power, we had a training algorithm, so things started working. Now here we have a you know bird's eye view of the back propagation algorithm. In the step number one, inputs are propagated from the network and the outputs are calculated, weights are multiplied, biases are added, in this way the inputs are calculated, then the sensitivities are propagated backward. What we have done, we do is that we propagate the input from the network and then we uh, subtract uh, 
uh, from the required uh, output that where we actually want the neural network output to be, output to be and that error is propagated backward through the network. And on the basis of that, in this formula, as you can see in this slide number seven, that the weights and biases are updated. They are calculated. New, new values are calculated and updated. In this way, this keeps on going until the error becomes zero or close to zero. So that is what basically, in basic essence, back propagation algorithm is. We are not going into much detail. It has a lot of details. It has a lot of different things and concepts. We are not going into those at the moment. Now, the, again, this is a way we have to differentiate and, uh, the and activation functions and constructed this matrix. So, we now talk about the direct inverse control. The basic idea of direct inverse control is that basically we train a network to act as an inverse of a given plant. If the plant has inverse exists, it's possible to uh, have its inverse. Then we can train the network to function as the inverse of the plant so that we give the desired system output as an input to the network and then the network calculates the, the corresponding outputs. So those are then fed to the plant and then in, the, in, a, in hope that the plant will give us the desired output. Now this is, uh, you know, uh, this is a very basic form control and the direct inverse control, the direct inverse control is not the only way in which we can use new networks and control systems. There are many different ideas, techniques, strategies. We're not talking about them at the moment. We are talking of the most basic technique that is the direct inverse control. That is that can be a starting point for you in the, when if you are interested in putting your stuff into this field. Now this is the algorithm of you can refer to through these points in the algorithm from step number one to step number seven. You can pause the video and go through these steps. And I'm also sharing with you my research work that I had done two years early. And uh, that uh, was on quad rotor. I was controlling the quad rotor using neural networks. So if you are interested in getting that details about that research, you can get it from me. You can find my paper on the internet as well. This is the model of the direct inverse control. You can see that we have a plant and into the plant we are feeding the output of the neural network. The output of the neural network is going into the tab delay line. The output of the plant is also going into the tab delay line. And then the tab delay line is feeding the neural network and we are also giving the reference signal to the neural network. And the reference signal, from the reference signal, the output of the plant is being subtracted and that difference is also going into the neural network in order to train the network. That arrow shows that. So this is the basics of the direct inverse control. Now first step in a neural network based controller design is selecting the appropriate neural network structure, the number of neurons, number of layers, etc. And in my research work I tried certain different structures of neural network, 16, 8, 4, 16, and 4, 8 hidden neurons, 4 output neurons, and 16, 16, 4, 16, 64, 4, and so on. That 16, 64, 4 produced the best result. Now here is the structure of the, uh, the direct inverse controller that I tested in my research work. You can consider it over here as an example. We are giving the output of the system through, we are passing it through a tab delay line and then that tab delay line is feeding the neural network. Reference input is also going into the neural network and then the output of the neural network is also fed back after being passed through the tab delay line into the neural network. So this structure of the neural network was used that I was uh, which I tested in my research work. This is also called NARCS model. Direct inverse control NARCS model. And uh, here you can see 16644 neural network structure. It's block diagram. And the simulating model of 1664 for multiple layer percent. It has the Neural network as well as the back propagation algorithm is, has also been implemented in it. And it's very easy to configure it. We just have to set the size of matrices and we can make it any size, any number of inputs, hidden layer and output layer. And the same structure can with that adjustment can be used for that purpose. 
So that is a, a similar model that is available. If you are interested in getting it from me, you can get it from me. And I tested this and for the control of the co-rotor uh, plant model. The direct inverse control of co-rotor. Here is a block diagram which you can see. And in this block diagram, we have the co-rotor plant and the rural network is connected with a capital A line and the reference is input is going into the inverse plant model and then into the neural network and we are testing the we are also giving it a certain learning rate and the output of the quantum plant is going to be saved in a dot mat file so this was the block diagram this was the structure of uh, this was the scheme in which i tested my uh, direct inverse control of quad rotor and you can see that the neural network is part of this um, uh, block diagram and it is the heart of this system it is the controller it controls the quad rotor plant and we are giving a reference input we are giving a learning rate learning rate is actually parameter uh, it is just it's not in signal as such uh, it's a parameter of the network and uh, the output of the quad rotor is passing through a tap delay line and that is going into the network. Reference input is going into the network, then the reference input and the, uh, it goes into the inverse plant model. And, uh, and, 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 and the second thing that we are doing is that the plant output, the plant actual output and the uh, inverse plant model output, they are subtracted from each other and that gives us the error. That is sent to the neural network in order to train it. The inverse plant model is used because we want to get a signal that uh, is that is the you can uh, think of it as the desired output of the quadrotor plant. Our reference input is something like in the form of voltage signal and uh, the inverse plant model output can be in form of the or you can say that the if the input signal if, for example what i what is happening over here is that let me explain you without going into the detail because a lot of detail has not been covered in this model what is happening is that we want suppose we want to drive part car at certain speed 100 kilometers an hour there's a signal that is 100 kilometers an hour that is the speed or velocity of the car and there's a voltage signal that corresponds to that 100 suppose 100 millivolts and there is an actual speed coming from the tires speedometer of the car that gives us the actual speed of the car. And we cannot subtract voltage from the actual speed. Voltage in volts is a different signal and the actual speed that is coming from the tires is a different signal. We cannot subtract them together from each other. What we can do is that we convert this, that voltage in the corresponding speed that this voltage, this 100 kilometers an hour speed, this 100 kilometers an hour speed is corresponds to 100 millivolts. We convert 100 millivolts into 100 kilometers an hour, and then that speed is compared with the actual speed. That is what is happening over here. That this inverse plant model is doing over here. Now this is the complete simulated model of the quad rotor plant which was tested. In my search work. You can see that we have quad rotor plant model. We have the multiple layer perceptron 16644. That is the heart of this block diagram. We have the reference input, we have the tab delay line, we have connected certain scopes with the output of the plant. And let's see what were the outputs of this after this simulation. As you can see over here in this slide, you can see the uh, you can see the acceleration, you can see you, you can see the pitch angle, you can see the yaw angle, you can see the roll angle. So there are four different signals that are being shown over here the vertical acceleration along the z-axis there's pitch angle of the rotor roll angle and yaw angle and they are all brought to the zero uh, value that is they are kept at zero value that is the uh, overstate of the system so we have we brought that to zero by means of the uh, network based control now this is the log diagram of a something of the multiple layer per septon that is available with me. If you want to own this particular block diagram and if you want to use it in your research work, you want to use this to control your plant, you want to 
embedded into your Simenon model and you want to test the neural you, the concept of neural control, this algorithm is available from me. You can get it from me. So feel free to contact me, write to me, email me, contact me through WhatsApp and you can get this uh, uh, Simenon model and uh, you can have it in the n number of input outputs see that uh, is simply tuning you can adjust that you, you can get it adjusted from me as well so if you are interested in earning this useful thing do not hesitate to contact me and uh, i'm waiting for your reply messages comments suggestions and my whatsapp number as well as my email and in the comments below this video don't forget to like it and subscribe my channel uh, to get uh, more and more informative and educational and very you know state of the art the videos on state of the art topics and please don't forget to support my channel and you can support my channel by making any contribution you like here you have my contact details my email address and my whatsapp number and if you want to own this model which I have shown you and you want to use it you are really excited about it interested about it and you are excited about learning neural networks and control systems and the implication of neural networks and control systems, you should get this uh, similar model. Thank you.